All right, all right. Good evening, Rayford Road. How y'all doing today, this afternoon? I'm glad to see y'all. And uh, we can go ahead and get those back doors closed. I bet, I bet my brother-in-law will take care of that. All right. Wow, it's good to see everybody. And we're going to go ahead and get, and get started. i tell you what let's do. <clears throat> let's stand. Everybody stand. Let's get ready to sing. A cappella. Sing an acapella. <laughs> How many of y'all know that song up on the screen? Y'all know that song? Let's see if I can just kick it off at a good key. If I can, I'll stop and do it again. But let's see if we can sing it. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free i love that song <clears throat> i always have <clears throat> i'm gonna pick it up just a little bit <clears throat> thank you lord for saving my soul thank you lord for making me whole thank you lord for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free give him praise amen thank the lord for his salvation Folks, that's one thing we can't do. We can't save ourselves. We don't, we don't possess any salvation. He possesses it all. And thank God that he has shared that salvation with me. Amen. You can be seated. <clears throat> thank you for your voices. Even the bad ones. Ah, right, we got a, got some announcements here, so just uh, kind of listen up, and we're going we're we're beating this drum pretty regular, but uh, need nursery workers, and Miss Stephanie uh, Bechtel, if you will let her know, step there is no sign up place or anything like that. Is that correct? Is that correct? You, they just they just need to contact Miss uh, Stephanie. Okay. All right, but if you just give her your name and say that you're willing, that you're willing, that's all she wants is willing vessels, and to keep the nursery, then she'll, she'll, she'll spread it out. She'll put you where you, and let you know. You, if we get enough folks, you won't probably won't have to do it, but just maybe once every month or two, and so that's not too bad. So we're really, we're really uh, just encouraging people to please get a hold of get a hold of her and then tonight is the last uh last night of awanas but just because awanas not going on up there there will be something going on and there'll be uh lessons and crafts and things of that nature i think uh probably uh miss kara johnson's taking care of that and some other folks but what they need is people that will volunteer on a wednesday night uh to help and to, to work with the kids. I think they do have a sign up sheet for that and there's like a, a week. You pick the week that you'd like to help and if you'll sign up, that'd be great. And the more they can get, like again, doesn't take, you don't have to do it very often. Uh, might, might get by with doing it once a, during the summer. But this will be through the summer that they will be doing this. Then at, when school starts back up, 
Awana will start back up. So uh, we just need help for nursery workers and Wednesday night workers. And also, uh, Brother Jim Hill is... Uh, He's, he's wanting to try to get a, a men's prayer group going. And uh, June the 10th on Saturday morning at 8, 8 a.m., just have a men's uh, prayer breakfast here and at the, in the fellowship hall. And if you got any, any questions, what it's about or anything, you can get a hold of uh, Brother Jim Hill. And, uh, it's this, and, and this is something I think it, he will can keep doing monthly, at least once a month, maybe twice a month, and having guys come together in the mornings for prayer and i'm i'm all for it uh, folks the more we can pray the better off we'll be amen there's no doubt about that and uh so we just uh just uh, for the men y'all keep that in mind and then uh not this coming sunday but june the 4th will be our last day up for the baby bottle uh campaign for the first coast women's services and so if you haven't turned it back in please go ahead and do that that little purple container a bucket there where you come in when you bring it back just put put it right there miss uh sharon Econom. she's she'll gather them up and she's they're seeing that they get to the uh first coast people and so if you haven't done that hadn't brought it back yet the the, the deadline will be june the 4th and we'll uh we'll take them up so keep that in mind also you got a homecoming coming june the 11th uh so bring your favorite dish and dessert and the church will provide the meet and we'll just come and have a good time i think it's what the 73 years this 73 years god's god's been good good times bad times ups and downs god's always been here and he's he's shown his love to his people here i thank him for it and also summer blast and this is for the the younger kids i think going into kindergarten and going into fifth grade is i think that's what we said completed fifth and completed kindergarten there we go all right and uh, uh so that will start june the 15th and there'll be three that's on thursday and uh and it'll be three three thursdays there but they miss sharon has they have a good time they had a good time last last year she's got everything lined up what they're going to be doing there's a sign up or a, one of those little codes you can get registered and you do need to get registered Mm -hmm. and they can sign in and register on the kiosk. Right there at the kiosk machine on the table there, okay. But uh, your kids, they, they will enjoy that, and uh, so just keep that in mind. Vacation Bible School is coming up. There is a sign-up sheet for that. We need more folks. We've got quite a few signed up, but we need, we need more because it takes a lot of folks to, to make Vacation Bible School happen. So that will be July the 10th through the 14th. So keep that in mind. Also, Sunday school will be changing uh, June the 4th for Sunday school ages, preschool, elementary kids. They will be moving up to their new class. So keep that in mind. And then uh, Brother George got a sign-up sheet for the Honda's mission trip. He's going to see if we've got the people interested in that. That's July the 23rd through the 28th. Uh, I know we, I think we got a couple signed up. So Keep that in mind if you want to be a part of uh, going again on a Honduras mission trip, and that's that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Especially if you've never been, I encourage you to go. And uh, but they'll, you'll be blessed more than you blessing those folks over there. A lot of times we go thinking we're going to try to bless them. Well, we we're going to do everything we can to do that. But I guarantee you, your heart will be blessed around those people. So so keep all that in mind. There's a lot of stuff going on, and. Uh, just kind of help us out <clears throat> tonight before we uh, before we get into the the word uh, we do want to go to the Lord in prayer and uh, I just want to mention uh, <clears throat> a couple of things and then we'll pass the mic around but uh, continue to pray for brother uh, Mike Spivey keep him lifted up I, I do want to share this and I, I think it's all right I saw him come in a while ago but uh, I uh, he told me today that uh, his doctor that's working on him told him that that had he felt like that if they did just the radiation there would be an 80 percent chance that they'd get that that cancer and that if they does the chemo that he's pretty sure that there's 99 percent chance they get it they kill it 
And I think that's just thank, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and I'm just trusting that, that that'll happen because uh, it was uh, very rare, fast growing. And I just I thank the Lord that they, they did what they did. And uh, so we're just going to trust that God's going to bless and that's, uh, that he'll be cancer free. You know, I mean, that's, that's, our, that's our prayer. So keep him lifted up. And also, uh, Mr. Preston Kennedy, uh, I know probably a lot of y'all don't, don't know him, and he, he, he would come and sit right back over here, an elderly gentleman. I think he's 78. But anyway, he, uh, he has cancer, and uh, hospice is there with him, and he's got a couple of daughters. And they're kind of taking care of him there at home. But uh, just, uh, just remember him. Keep Keep him lifted up in the family uh, for the next few days. It's just be, be be a tough time. And so, anyway, now, anybody got a prayer request or a, or a praise report that you want to share? We want to hear it. And so, raise your hand. Uh, yes, just a minute. <coughs> yeah, last week, uh, Odell asked me to have a prayer for Stanley Connor, who was having open heart. Uh, scheduled for a liver transplant and back pain he went in they found they fixed the heart the liver is doing good they didn't don't need to do that anymore so prayer was answered and of course keep Teresa on there hey amen that's good that's a that's good about stanley i found out today that uh a colleague of mine he's actually the engineer over the midpoint project uh he was feeling bad this week and and uh Went to the doctor and he got a real bad report. He's got cancer real bad. He's got, as a matter of fact, today they was taking the lymph nodes out under his arms and everywhere, so it don't look good. And he thought he had a stomach virus. And this someone you work with, or yeah, okay. Any anyone else? Any prayer request? Bring him up. <laughs> Eddie, I went to visit Miss Juanita Carter yesterday afternoon, and. Please pray that, I mean, senior citizens, you know, having a really tough time getting into some doctors. And there was a lady on the phone with her yesterday from MD Anderson that was quite rude to her. And um, she doesn't deserve that, you know. So uh, paperwork and all is just horrible. And um, But she needs to go ahead and get in there so she can find out what her next step is. But y'all just keep her lifted up because it's... You know, when you're by yourself and you just dwell on this stuff, you know, it's just bad. So anybody that can go by and visit with her, she sure is a sweet lady and would love to see the church family. Well, I would like to start out by thanking everyone for their prayers because I know y'all have been praying for me for a long, long time. And from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate it. And I can feel them. And... I just tell the Lord every day, Lord, when I'm healed completely and I can walk around this church and thank you for it, y'all going to see me walk around this church and thank him for it. I can't kick my legs up and jump yet, but I'm here and it's just a blessing to, this is the best day I've had in probably 10 weeks um, and I'm just thanking him every second I can. And just know that I just felt yesterday, even though when the Lord made a way for me to get my surgery, I knew that was my healing, but I just still didn't feel that it was complete. But yesterday, I just got with the Lord by myself, and he just said some things to me that opened my eyes, and it's like, okay, Lord. And I felt yesterday my healing's coming. And so... I got out and walked yesterday. We walked today, and it's like I might not can get up in the morning, but I'm going to praise him anyway, and I'm going to keep pushing forward. And I just appreciate if y'all continue to pray for me until I can get my complete healing. And also, my oldest grandson, Ethan, will be leaving in the morning, and he's going to be gone six weeks. He's going to go play baseball up in North Carolina. So y'all keep y'all prayers on him, please. Thank you, Angie. Yes, and we thank the Lord for answered prayer and uh, a lot of prayer, and still a lot of prayers for you. Yes. 
This is kind of dumb, but I'm going to tell it anyway because it does give glory to the Lord. I, uh, I guess it was Monday night. I, well, I'd done it a couple of times, but I was fixing to go buy something from the fellow. And I told the Lord that night when I prayed, I said, don't let me do something stupid, Lord. I said, because, you know, I'm, I'm liable to you. I will. If I ain't careful, I'll just do something stupid. <laughs> I said, so don't let me, you know, go over there and buy something that I don't need. Well, I was about halfway to Lake City, my phone rung. And that man said, there ain't no need coming over here. I said, I ain't got it ready for you to buy now. And I thought, well, I believe the Lord just let me know that I didn't need that thing. <laughs> So I thank the Lord. He he answers simple prayers and and he answers the you know the great ones. That is so true. And a lot of times we overlook things like that, but God moved and you see it. Keep your eyes open for it. Any any others? Any prayer requests? Praise reports? Anybody? Yeah, yeah. Mama did have her had some teeth pulled, and but she she said it didn't bother her a bit. So I thank the Lord for that for sure uh any anyone else any 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 prayer requests praise all right <clears throat> um we did get some reports back from the mayo clinic today we haven't spoken to jeff's doctor till friday but um in our porthole from what we can read in layman terms it looks like that um there is some progression in Jeff's cancer. So um, we don't know how bad it is or if we can change, you know, treatment, things like that. So we're still keeping hopes up on that. But if things are turning for the worst, I still want to praise the Lord for keeping my husband around this long. He's been a blessing every day he's been here. So I'm going to keep on praising him for that. Folks, it don't get any better than that. It doesn't get any better than that. That's that's just putting your, your faith and your trust in the Lord and praising him any, anyhow, no matter what, no matter what. That is good, Elisa. And that's what she's talking about, her husband, Jeff, that sits here with her, Jeff Brownfield, and he's battled cancer for a couple of years now. And uh, we just continue to pray and thank the Lord for, like she said, the time that he's, he's given and so it's all in the Lord's hands. We're going to praise him anyway. Folks, when you can get there, what can there's, what can happen to you? You know, I mean, it doesn't matter. You're going to praise the Lord anyhow because he's your everything. So that is so good. That is so good. So anyway, else, just real quick. If not, we're going to go to go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, <clears throat> I just ask you all to be praying. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, as we come right now, what a privilege and an honor it is just to come and call upon your great and mighty name. Lord, we just thank you for this time. We're talking, we're talking to the creator of the universe, the one that's so far above our thoughts and our ways, Lord, we cannot even imagine just who you are. But we thank you and praise you, Lord, for your word that has revealed yourself to us to a certain point. But God, we long and look for the day that we will, we will be with you and in your presence, Lord. Knowing that that is eternity. That is forevermore. Everything that we know here is temporary. But you're, you're eternal. Father, we thank you. Thank you for who you are, what we have. And tonight as we come together, I just want to pray for th these folks that are, that are struggling, Lord, with these diseases. Father, uh, for Brother Michael Spivey, I pray for him. I thank you for what the doctor has said. We're just going to trust and believe and continue to pray, God, that you will, you will just remove this cancer. And uh, that's our heart's desire. For Mr. Preston Kennedy, Lord, uh, as hospice is there with him, he's at home. That's where he wants to be. Uh, he's, he's not doing well at all, but they're taking care of him. I pray for his daughters. I pray for his family, Lord, as they, they walk this road. That's just, it's, it's tough. And, Father, for 
someone we don't even know. Uh, uh, someone that Brother Glenn works with, his acquaintance, and, uh, and just found out that he's got, he's got cancer bad. And Father, uh, you know, any of us sitting here today, we could, we could find that out ourselves tomorrow. And uh, so, Father, we just, we just pray for these folks. For Miss Juanita Carter, uh, Father, we love her. She's been here for many, many years. She's been faithful. She's battled cancer for a, a long time. She continues to come when she can. Uh, there's um, found something else with her. But, Lord, I know, I know that she loves you. And it doesn't matter, Lord. She knows you, and she's, she's, it's in your hands, and I know that she, she's just resting in that. Lord, if you want to raise her up, Lord, you will. And, Father, I just pray that you'll bless her in a powerful and wonderful, wonderful way. Lord, I do want to thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. And on behalf of Angie, thank, thankful that she's here tonight. She's able to get around. We pray it continue to continue to get better. Uh, Lord, we, we just, we can just, all we can do is thank you. And we'll continue to pray for her, Father. And it's so good to know that in times of struggle like that and the tremendous pain that she was in and that you got, you got people praying for you. You got people that love you and care about you, Lord. Father, that's, that's, that's the kind of church we want to be. Lord, that we, we love one another. We pray for each other. We care about each other. And I thank you, Lord, for answering prayer in her behalf. And I do pray for her, for Ethan, her grandson, Lord, that you will be with him where he goes, Lord, to protect him, take care of him, Father. And uh, then for for Jeff Brownfield, Lord, I, I pray for him. I, uh, I just want to thank you. For the testimony that we heard tonight from Elisa, as she shared that, and that that there may be some some cancer that's progressing or again or, or whatever the case may be, but that just that that faith, Lord, it just shows. That's not easy. That's not easy. That's something that you've given her, Lord, and I thank you for that. Father, I, I just I thank you for her just touching my heart tonight and just hearing those words come from her straight up, straight up. No matter what, she's going to pray. She's going to praise you, Father. And Father, I, I just I just thank you. That's that's something the world cannot give us. The world cannot give that. And Father, that I just thank you. Thank you. I praise you, Lord, for who you are. Uh, I pray for our church. I lift our church up. Uh, Father, we, I pray for families in our church, Lord. Uh, there's this spiritual warfare, Lord. It's constant. We can never let our guard down. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you will take care of us, this church. Help us. Help the leaders here. Keep our eyes focused on you and let you guide. This church is your church. And let you guide us and use us for your glory. We love you, Lord. Again, I thank you, Lord. It's just an honor and it's a joy to be together tonight in your house, in your presence, with your people. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. Uh, grab your Bible, if you will, and go to 1 Samuel. We're going, we're going to get into uh, David and Goliath tonight. We're working our way through. I've been I've just been wanting to study the life of David, and uh, so First Samuel chapter seventeen, if you will, just stand, and if you're able to stand, and uh, I'm going to read. A, I'm going to read a lot of scripture here. We won't read the whole chapter, but we're going to read about half of it, and uh, then we'll work our way through. First Samuel seventeen one. <clears throat> It says, Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and they were gathered at Soko, which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Soko and Azekah in Ephesdamon. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah 
and drew up in line of battle against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, the Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, with a valley between them. <clears throat> and there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung over his shoulders. A shaft of, the shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weight weighed 600 ton, uh, shekels of iron. And his shield bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of an Ephthite of Bethlehem in Judah named Jesse, who had eight sons. And in the days of Saul, the man was already old and advanced in years. The three oldest sons of Jesse had followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons who went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next to him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest, and the three eldest had followed Saul. But David went back and forth from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. For forty days the Philistine came forward and took his stand, morning and evening. And Jesse said to David his son, Take for your brothers an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves and carry them quickly to the camp to your brothers. Also take these ten cheeses to the commander of their thousands. See if your brothers are well and bring some token from them. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elod fighting with the Philistines. And David rose early in the morning and left the sheep and with the, a keeper and took the provisions and went, as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the encampment as the hosts were going out to battle to the, to the battle line, shouting the war cry. And Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. And David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage, and ran to the ranks and went and greeted his brothers. And as he talked with them, behold, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before. And David heard him. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were very much afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel, and the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David said to the men who stood by him, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God. Father, I thank you for your word. As we look in this tonight, we just, our hearts cry out to you. Pray, Lord, that you will bless it. Uh, that it'll stir our heart. It'll touch our hearts. It'll, it, it, it'll, it'll, it'll go to each heart. And you know every heart here. You know what we're dealing with. We know, you know what we need, each one of us. And Father, I pray that your word will touch us here tonight. Uh, Father, we can leave this place saying it was good. It was good to be in the house of the Lord. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> A 
As I begin here in this chapter, we, uh, I just titled it, uh, David, the, the Young Fighter. He's a, he's a, young, he's a young boy here uh, right, right now. And uh, we began, we looked at when he was anointed as David, uh, the shepherd, the shepherd boy. Then we looked at, for a couple of weeks, we had looked where he was the musician, uh, the sweet psalmist of Israel. And all the things that he did like that, he was very talented, very good looking uh, kid. But here, uh, and, and we'll find out as, as we go along, there's the way this lays out, sometimes it's hard to figure out where David, where all this fits in. But I, just, I take it as it's, it's the Word of God and it's been placed here and preserved for us. Some of the things we may not fully understand, uh, but there's a lot of it that we can't. We can't understand what's going on. So I'm going to go back and, and begin to work my way through it. And uh, I kind of broke this down, broke it down into uh, three sections. And the first one is I just want to look at a, a big foe, a big foe. Uh, Goliath was 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 big, okay. You know, I've always I've always heard heard it. You know, David David fighting Goliath. I've always thought he he was called a giant. How many of y'all thought he was called a giant? I did. Well, he ain't called a giant. Nothing I read there. He just said he was a champion. But he was big. It gives his size and uh, with the with the. What they gave there, the, the six cubits in the span, that would actually make him nine foot and nine inches tall. If that's the span or uh, the, uh, the cubit was 18 inches. Some, sometimes cubits were 21 inches. If that was the case, he'd be on up over 10 foot. But uh, he was nine foot tall. I will throw this out, though. And you, if you got an ESV Bible, this will be down in your footnotes. That uh, the, the Hebrew, the Septuagint, which was the Hebrew writing of the New Testament, the Dead Sea Scrolls, which was written by Jews, and Josephus, the historian, written by a Jew, they uh, those all said four instead of six. So that would only make him like maybe six foot nine, something like that, you know. And so I, the way the way I see it, I believe probably that nine nine foot probably. Would, would work, but either way, he was a big. He was a big dude, and he had to be big because the coat of armor weighed 125 pounds. So he, that's pretty, pretty, pretty substantial there to have to around. So then his spearhead. It talks about his spearhead weighed about 15 pounds. Just the head on the spear, 15 pounds. So I don't know how big it was, but he was big, and he was. Probably somewhere like that nine, nine, ten foot, somewhere in there. So when you think about it, the odds was not really good, you know, for whoever fought him, most likely. Uh, I do want to look at this, uh, and it talked about him being a champion. And, uh, and I, just, I just thought, well, let's think about it. What, what, is, what, is, what does it mean, a champion? And I looked the definition up. It says, a person who has defeated or surpassed all rivals in a competition. So I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking here at, at, at Goliath and his champion and, and what he says and the challenge that he makes. Send somebody to fight me. If y'all can kill me, we'll serve y'all. You know, but if I kill your guy, y'all serve us. Uh, I said, this is from one who has probably won many hand-to-hand -hand combats and probably never lost. Have, have, uh, you've heard the statement, the undefeated champion, okay? I kind of think Goliath was probably there. He probably had never never lost at all in, 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 in a battle. And so uh, I just, I wrote down the fact that, that he probably was very confident in his own self. And so uh, something that we, uh, we need to realize, we don't need to, we don't need to have confidence in ourselves like this. Uh, and so he's, he's strictly thinking that there's nothing they can do with me, about me, against me. I'm the champ, you know. Uh, what was it? Float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. I'm the champ. Ain't that, you know, that sort of thing. 
that, that's telling my age there. Probably a lot of folks might not know who, who that is. But uh, that's Goliath. And, uh, but then it, he makes this, uh, this statement here. And, I, and it, it caught my eye. It says in verse 10. Verse 10. And the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. And uh, I just put, I, I thought about that. And that's what he's saying. I, I'm defying the ranks of Israel. But I want, I want you to think about this. To, and when, you, when he talked about Israel, here at this time, you're talking about God's people. He's talking about God's people. And he's saying that he defies the ranks of Israel. So I wrote this down. I think, I think this is, is, is true. To defy God's people is, in essence, to defy, to defy God himself. And I think about that, and I've and, and I thought about this today as I've studied this, that uh, where we live, the culture we live in today, and how more and more there's opposition to Christian people. Y'all, y'all, y'all agree with that? Yes, sir. We, we, know, we, we know that. We know that. It's more and more and more. And it'll continue to get more and more and more. Something you, we do understand that something's got to give, right? Sooner or later, either you're going to get stamped out, like what they want to do here, you know, or you're going to have to stand up. Okay. And and I and I and, I, and as I studied this today, I want you to think about this. The, though we look at this as a as a, a battle of flesh and blood and a story and all of this kind of thing, I want you to understand that even here, the battle was a spiritual battle. It was against God and God's people. That's what it was about, and it was about from the world. All of these, all of these countries around there, and especially the Philistines, this they had their gods. It was not. It was not Jehovah God. You know. They had something they believed in, but they, they, they worked from their, their, their own flesh and, and the world's uh, view, and, and they, they wanted to, to stamp out uh, these people. But it's basically a spiritual, it's against God. And folks, listen to me. When the opposition comes against us today, you got to realize that what really is happening is the opposition is coming against our God. Our truth. Our word. His word. That's where the opposition is. They, they want to get rid of God. And it's, I, you know, and I've kind of heard that along and along, as, but you can, you can see it now today when, when they're trying to, trying to force the fact that if you don't want to be what gender you are, you're, it's your right to change it if you want to. Now, what, what is that saying? What, the, what it is saying is that it doesn't matter what God made you. You can make yourself whatever you want to be. Do you understand it's, it's, it's against God? That's what it is. There's a creator. And he even said, I created Male and female. That's what he said. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't like that. And we will, we, will do, we will change that. We don't want a God over us that tells us what to do, tells us what's right and wrong, and expects it out of us, and says that there's a judgment coming if you don't. That we don't, we don't want to hear that. We don't, and anybody that preaches or teaches or lives that, we don't, want, we don't like them. If we can get rid of them, we can get rid of him. But folks, let me tell you something. It's been tried to be stamped out for thousands of years, and it's never worked, and it never will. There's only one God, and he's alive and well. He's the living God. He's alive and well. And uh, you, we, don't, we don't have to, we don't have to, hey, we don't have to fear, okay? We don't have to fear. And you say, well, that's easy. But whenever they tell me if I don't allow this to happen, you can't work in this place and you lose your job, you've been there for 20 years, and you don't have a job because you, don't, you won't conform to what goes against your God. You understand? 
And it, it, it'll put you. It, it, it's going to put us eventually in a place where you're going, to have to, you're going to have to make a decision. And you'll say, well, I'm just, you, you're either going to stand up for what's right and speak it, or you're just going to sit down and shut up and allow whatever comes. And I, I could see so much of that in this right here that we're looking at tonight. Let's, 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 move, on, let's move on through there. So I the, the defy God. But then, and I also I want you to look at verse 11 real quick. When, and see the reaction of, it says, when Saul and all Israel heard, when they heard, who, when they heard Goliath, these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. That's, they were greatly afraid. Saul, he's the king. It talks about Saul says he was head and shoulders above anybody. Big man. He was big himself. But he wasn't going out there. He wasn't going out there to fight. He was afraid. I can tell you, 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, But God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind or self-control or self-discipline, whatever you, however you want to look at it. You get love, power, and self-control. And I, I, I love, you know, the Bible lays things down. It's there for a reason. Love's a wonderful thing. Power, he gives us power. But power with, with no self-control is dangerous. Everybody go ahead and say amen. amen. You need self-control. I need self-control. And uh, so there's no need. God's word says there's no need to be fearful. Maybe it's, maybe it's something that you should be. But I believe in the, the God that we serve. And if, you, if he's there, and you, <laughs> you're working with him, and he's working with you, you can stand up in the face of anything. And I believe that. And David's proof of it. So let's, let's, let's move on. They were, uh, because I'm going I'm to I'm come back to that here in a little bit. But I, I have to hurry. Terry, I'm saying it already ain't a bust. Verse 12. <clears throat> I don't understand this right here all of a sudden. You know, we've done, we've done heard who David was and, he, you know, when he was anointed and all that. I, and I just wrote here, here's, this is another introduction of David and his family. Kind of, you, know, you know, I don't know, I don't know why it's here. Uh, we've been talking about it. But it says, uh, you know, told that he was the son of Jesse and the three boys. They, we saw them when he was anointed. They were rejected. Uh, and that, and that David, David was the, uh, was the youngest one thing I do want you to, uh, to, to call to your attention here is that them three, them three older boys are in the, in the army fighting. You had to be over 20 years old to be in the military with Israel. And that, that was the law. That was the law that Moses had put down. So David, evidently he's under, he's, under, he's not 20. He's, not, he's, still, he's still in his teens. So, and, so he's there. And how all this works out when you look back at when he was going and playing music for Saul and, and these different things, we'll, we'll just work our way through it. But he was, he was probably in his teens. And then it, then it says this, and think about it. You're thinking, well, what is this about? And David went back and forth from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. You, it's, see, it's kicking back in two. And it's talking about whenever he was going to play, he'd play for Saul when the evil spirit come on him. The harmful spirit, he would play, but he wouldn't stay. He would go back home. He'd stay, would be with his daddy, take care of sheep, but he would come back to Saul, back into him. That's what, that's, what it's talk, that's what it's talking about. It kind of gives us an idea how, how things are going, going here, but we, we'll still run into some, some head scratchers. But uh, So he went back and forth to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. I always think about, I and mean, we talked about him being a shepherd. He was a shepherd whenever they had to go get him. He wasn't even, they didn't even bring him up to be looked at. And they brought him up and God, he was anointed. When Saul wanted him to come, they needed the musician. They found him. Where was he? He was there with the sheep. Said he went, had to go get him with the sheep. He's still with the sheep. He still goes back. He's still with the sheep. And that, that humility that we find in, in David. David knows he's been anointed. You know, they, David knows the Lord. Uh, David's already experienced things in his life that God has done miraculously for him. But then in, uh, in verse 16, look at this. For 40 days, and I will tell you, I looked, I looked up, and I'm not going, I didn't put it down because I'm going, but I bet you there's a dozen different things in the Bible about 40, 40, 
40 days. It rained 40 days and nights and flood. It was 40 days the spies spied out the land of Israel. And then when they didn't go into the, and they refused to go in, it was 40 years in the wilderness, uh, a year uh, for every, every, uh, uh, every day, you know, 40 days. And uh, it's just on and on and on, 40. But here we are with 40 days. Just think about that. For 40 days, the Philistine came forward and took his stand morning and evening. Twice a day, twice a day, he'd come out and say the same thing, same thing. They sat there and listened to it. Sitting there listening to it. I'm, I'm going to tell you, one of the reasons that, I, that, I, that I, I share things about where our society is and what, is that it, it can get bad quickly. It, your, your world and my, our, my world and your life can change quickly. It, it happened in, in Nazi Germany. It didn't take long. Ten years it went from one thing to a complete nightmare and you know what you know what the church was doing (laughs) nothing can you believe that they never said nothing about it scared to afraid they'd lose stuff whatever but I'm I'm reading a book by Eric McTaxis talking it's called a, a, a letter to the American church. The stuff you're, looking, you're listening to and the stuff that's being jammed down your throat, you're going to have to do something about it because they ain't going to just quit. You understand? Know what And I'm, just, I'm saying I ain't no prophet, but I can guarantee you I'm almost sure I'm giving you that truth there. Eventually, God's people are going to have to stand up. I mean, is, 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 and say... That's, that's wrong. I said, that's wrong. I don't know what. Well, yeah, but what's it going to cost you? Well, it doesn't matter what it costs you. It's wrong. And that's what they were doing here. 40 days. They ain't doing nothing but sitting there listening and getting bashed. But then, uh, in verse six, uh, 17 and 18, it's, it's where he, he told uh, David to gather up the grain and stuff and take it to the brothers and the cheese and carrot and sh- to the commanders and, and, and go find out what was going on. And I, and I just, I, I wrote this down. I, th- I think it's good. I, David always, David always was faithful in the small things. He was faithful in the small things. And we need to remember that. Just be faithful in the small things. You know, don't, don't sit around and say, well, I'm not, I, can't, I ain't doing nothing because I ain't doing nothing big. No, be faithful in, in the small things. And that's what David did. And I, and I, and I wrote this down, by, and I liked it. Things are about to change for David. He don't know it. All, all, he, all he is is a cheese toter right now. He's just taking the stuff in there to the people that's fighting. That's all he knows is doing what his dad said. But it's going to change. But he's faithful in what he's doing. But it's going to change for David as God has prepared and is now positioning David for a time such as this. Folks, listen. Just allow God to prepare you and position you. Don't try to force yourself somewhere. Just allow God to prepare you and position you and use you in any, any way. And there's a multitude of ways. God uses his people for, for his glory. Now, let me... Hey, I got this. Hustle on here. So we get that little that little bit there about him and, and what's happening and he's being sent to the battle and he, he, we we know what's going on with Goliath. Now let's uh, let's pick let's pick up here and I, I, first verse nineteen. I, I couldn't I couldn't hardly <laughs> I thought this was so strange. Now Saul and they I get I don't know if it was talking about his older brothers or what and all the men of Israel. We're in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. Does that seem funny? There wasn't no fighting going on, was it? There wasn't no fighting going on. <laughs> they might have thought that, that Jesse might have thought they was fighting out there, but when David gets there, he finds that they ain't, they ain't no fight in them. Right? They, they're not. They're just listening to Goliath. 
But now listen, look at David. Let's look at here. It says, And David rose early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took the provisions and went, and as Jesse commanded him. And he came to the encampment as the host was going out on to the battle line shouting the war cry. Look at that. Think about that. I, I, they went out shouting the war What? What good's it? What good's it going to do to go out shouting the war cry and you ain't gonna do nothing? You understand what I'm saying? And I, so I, I got the thing, but I just wrote down shouting the war cry. Talk comes cheap. You ever, you ever, you ever heard? A lot of times in that old worldwide wrestling, whatever that wrestling was. They had always going to, oh, he's going to do this, that, and the other. Oh, you, just, you just wait till I get in that ring. And, uh, it, oh, man, he, he, he just run his mouth. He didn't do nothing. And he get in there, and then he gets whipped, you know. But next week, he's back up there hollering the same thing. I can almost see them doing that here. Forty days, and y'all just, all right, we get, gather up and go. Go shouting out there that we're going to whip that bunch. And then Goliath steps up and all of a sudden they haul back to the house. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? <laughs> yeah. But we better be careful that we don't do the same thing. We talk a good fight. I wrote down here, talking a good game won't win it. You got to get out there and do it. So let's, let's, let, let, let me go on down because this is good. I like this. So they went, in verse 21 it says, And Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. Here they go again. And David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage and ran to the ranks and went to greet his brothers. He said, Man, I got here right at the right time. Man, I'm fixing to see something here. There's going to be some fighting going on. I'm right there. He runs out there, going to check on a brother. And just, he says, and as he was talking with them, with his brothers, behold, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, <laughs> Goliath by name, he, come, he came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words. As before. Same thing. Send me somebody. Ha, ain't nobody going. Anybody going? But listen to this. He said the same words that all the rest of them have been here for 40 days. But here's the difference. David heard him. David heard him. Sometimes it's different when the right person hears. You ever been a there's a kid doing something, maybe your parents or a school or something other, and you talking this, that, and the other, and all of a sudden you realize that the, the teacher heard, and I'm in trouble. Goliath didn't realize it, but somebody heard him that day, and he was in trouble. You know, you know what I, what I, that, this little block, this third block, I, I titled it David, David's Different Ear. They all heard it. Look at verse 11. I carry you back. I told you we'd be back there. When Saul and all Israel heard, they heard it. But it was a different ear, wasn't it? They were dismayed and greatly afraid. David heard it. It's a different story. Isn't that something? That's amazing. That's amazing to me. I kind of like to say, if you, if you got it, you got it. If it's there, it'll show. When the pressure's on, you find what's on the inside. That's, that's amazing to me. I love it. This is David. This is God's, the man God, after God's own heart, the man he's already anointed to be king. The one who God himself says, that's the man through his lineage that I'll bring my only begotten son into this world to pay sin debt and take care of the, the spiritual battle that these folks can't win without me. 
it would be right there. Had it. Oh, that's good. <clears throat> so, David heard him. I said, this time, David, <laughs> Goliath said it to the wrong one. David heard differently than those others. But then this us drop down into verse 25. So it says David heard him, but then here, look at listen to this. Think about think about the scene. David, that young boy, he's went out. He thinks he's fixing to see something. He's talking with his brothers. They're fixing to be a fight here. And then that said, guy comes out and says that, and David hears all that, and he's thinking, you know, I, I know in David's mind, that he's he, he's thinking cause from the way he talked. He's saying, you know, that man, that man's crazy. Talk like that in the fire. Our God. And he's thinking. And then all of a sudden, everybody's running past him. They all getting out of Dodge. Where y'all going? You can almost picture that. It says, and the men of Israel, <laughs> it says, the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were much afraid. And the men of Israel said, and I think they're talking to David, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he's come to defy Israel. And the king, hey, listen, and then they add this. The king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches and would, will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. They're telling David that. I, and I just wrote this down. It wasn't about the money or being enriched for David. <laughs> it didn't, but wasn't. As a matter of fact, m money, money had not bought any of them. There wasn't nobody, hey, the offer was to all of them. Ain't nothing. Evidently, Saul didn't have enough money and his, and his daughters weren't that pretty. <laughs> ain't nobody going. There ain't nobody going. But, but here's what he'll do for you if you want to go. But we ain't going. Thank you. This is a wonderful lady right here. <laughs> she knew that I needed these last few things. <laughs> It wasn't about being enriched. Folks, it's not about money. <laughs> if you love the Lord, you love the Lord. If you got it, you got it. You, 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 you'll live for him, you'll die for him. So it was David's, I, the last thing here to look at is that David's view. They had a view. They heard it. They run. And David said to the men who stood by him, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach of Israel? I mean, they just told him, so it's like, in my mind, it's saying, are you kidding me? He's offering all that kind of stuff just for somebody to go kill that guy? It's a different way of thinking. Here's what he says. For who is this Philistine? That's what I mean. Who does Goliath think he is? Who is he? Compared to our God. He's defying our God, us. Are we, are we Christians in word only or do we live it? Do we stand up? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies? Now here's the difference. See, here's what David's seeing. That he should defy the armies of the living God. That's who is defined. Folks, remember, when people oppose us, defy us, whatever, it's a spiritual battle. It's our God that they don't like. This world, this world and the world system just the, does not like God and his word and his truth because this world is under the sin curse. Every one of us. My goodness, if it wasn't for the grace of God, we, 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 wouldn't, we wouldn't either. We wouldn't believe him either. We would be fighting against him too. Thank God for his grace and mercy. Amen. Amen. Thank God that I'm saying, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. And thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy salvation so rich and free. David knew who he served. He believed it. And later on, and next week, we're going to get the other half of this chapter. But uh, five takeaways, and I'll pray. Number one, our battle is spiritual. Always remember that. Always. It's not flesh and blood. 
You think it is. It didn't look like it was there. No, it's spiritual. It's spiritual. <clears throat> Number two, when the world opposes us, it's because they oppose our God. Number three, be faithful in the small things. Just let God prepare you and position you. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Those are good. Good little lessons straight from here. But, uh, boy, we've loved that. If you've been, if you were, if you were raised in church, every little guy in the, raised in church loved that story. But isn't there something in all of us that wants to say, "Man, I'd love to be like David," you know? And where he was, but it's being used by God. But we also have to keep this in mind: that same David made some terrible mistakes, but he still knew his God. And he knew that the salvation was in his God. Amen? That is so good. Father, thank you for this time. Father, thank you for everyone here. Thank you for your word. Father, we truly believe we just we have to stand. And sometimes you may you may take us and put us in places where it, it's it will be it will be difficult to stand. Lord, but I believe when we get there, you'll be there and you'll meet us there. Help us do that. Help us keep our, our mind focused and prayed up, Father. That is one reason in my heart I just, this church needs to be a praying church. We have to pray. So the more we can pray, the stronger we will be as individuals and as a body of believers. Father, we need you. Bless your people, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.